him. In those days when he walked the face of the earth, he cleansed the lepers. He opened the blind eyes. He raised the dead. He healed every kind of known sickness and every known disease during that time. And the Bible declares that he's the same. Can somebody say praise the Lord? our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHerring.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. And if you have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 8. And when you've found it, I would like to ask if you would stand with us for the reading of the Word. If you found this passage of Scripture, would you say, Amen? Amen. We are going to read verses 14 through 17. Let us read responsibly. I'll read one verse, and if you will read the other one. And the last verse, we will read together, verse 17, beginning at verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. When the even was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with this word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful to come to you today, thanking you for the body of Christ, Thanking you for the word. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask now for the Holy Spirit to take full control and minister the divine life unto us today. We thank you that we know that life comes through Jesus Christ, your son. Have your way. Be manifested. Be real. For we've gathered for your purpose. Now, bless us through your word. Open the eyes of our understanding. Give illumination in revelation knowledge, O oh God, that we may behold the wonders out of your precious word. We thank you, Father. Take full control of the atmosphere and let the glory of your presence and let the love of Christ permeate the atmosphere now for your own name's sake. This we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you now. You may be seated again. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is what we all and who we all try to model our lives after because of his precious spirit that lives within us. We thank him for his goodness toward humanity, giving his life to die for all the sins of humanity. We thank him because there is no hope nor salvation in any other. Only in Jesus Christ 
And he said in his word, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We've just read the text in the gospel according to Matthew, how Jesus went into Peter's house and there his mother-in-law was sick of a fever. And the Bible records that he touched her and she was made whole of this fever and she immediately arose to serve. Isn't it interesting as when God touches our lives it makes us want to serve. It is wonderful. Well it was no less for his mother-in-law and if you'll read in the gospel here in St. Matthew chapter 8 we see one of the first miracles here in chapter 8 is he finds himself in presence of a leper or a leper in the presence of him and saying Lord if you will you can make me clean and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and says I will be thou clean and then the story is told of the centurion who came who sent word to Jesus about his servant that was sick and as he sent them to face to go to Jesus to inquire help of him uh, he said come down before or come and heal my servant he lie at home sick and the Bible records that Jesus's response was so wonderful he said I will come and heal him and that always blesses me to think that Jesus as important as he was and as busy as he was found time to come to this person's house or he found time that was his whole will he said I will come and heal him but the centurion said Lord uh, there, really there's no need for you to come to my house I don't feel worthy that you should come under my roof but just say in a word and my servant will be healed because I'm a man under authority also and I say to my servant do this and to another one do that and he do it and so he understood authority and the fact that he understood authority and how it works and so that Jesus was one of authority um, Jesus thought that was just uh, great faith. He said, uh, I've not found such great faith in Israel. So it tells me that faith is so important in receiving from God. He was able to receive without Jesus going to his house uh, because he believed God, that Jesus was a man of authority. He was the son of God, power and authority over sicknesses and diseases. So he said, say in a word and my servant will be healed. And it was so, and God says, let it, uh, let it be unto you according to your faith, let it be. And Jesus says the same thing today to us. We find ourselves in various situations, but Jesus says, according to your faith, be it unto you. So we believe in trials and tribulations. We believe when sicknesses and disease, or when we have loved ones that have need of God, we believe in faith when we ask him. Ask, the Bible says, and receive that your joy may be full. So we ask God, and God hears our prayer. It is wonderful. The thing that we can see concerning this is that uh, some sicknesses here uh, come as a result of demonic uh, operations. Here we see that he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. It is marvelous because his word carries the power to deliver people from sickness and disease. But it shows me that Satan sometimes is behind sicknesses and condition. I'm not saying he's behind all, but there are some that he, uh, Satan is behind it. There was a, a woman that uh, was bowed over for 18 years and she could by no means lift herself up. And the Bible makes it clear that uh, when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and the scribe, he says, ought not this woman be loosed who was bound these 18 years, who was bound by whom Satan has bound, be loosed. So he made it clear that there are some conditions that uh, Satan has to be bound or loose the people before this recovery of in some physical condition. There are what we know as spirits of infirmity. And these spirits come and attack people's bodies 
especially when they find a door open. If they find the door open, whether it's sin, whether it's uh, some uh, other condition of trauma, whatever the condition may be, they may, it may open the door for a spirit of infirmity to come in. And when they come in, then they, of course, afflict the body. And that happened. But Jesus Christ is still the answer to spirits of infirmity. He's the answer to sickness and diseases. And what the Lord has been making clear to me to take time and share more about God's love and God's power to heal. He wants to heal the physical body just like the soul. It is important to God. And so when Jesus, his message or his theme was the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has arrived and the kingdom of God means the rule of God. So he was announcing the rule of God, the arrival of the kingdom of God, which was to change things, to change the order of things. And as he announced and taught about the kingdom of God, there was a manifestation of the power of this kingdom and the authority. And this power and the authority of this kingdom brought uh, people that were oppressed and possessed by demonic powers. It broke their power and also it brought healing to many sick bodies. And the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Which means that if he healed 2,000 years ago, he still heals today. Because he does not change. He cannot change. He is who he is. He is the word of God. He's the word of life. Jesus said in John 10, the thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the world, but I came that the world through me might be saved. So Jesus is the door of the sheepfold. Jesus is the door to eternal life. He is the door that if a man will seek after him or come to him, he can have life and he can move from death to life through Jesus. The Bible says, whoever has the son has life and Jesus gives life today. And even if there are those of you that are listening now and you don't experience this life, this eternal life, this life of God, this life that drives out sickness and disease, this life that makes a person walk in holiness, this life that causes a person to have right relationship with God. It is this life of God that causes one to be holy, set apart by God. It is the life of God and it is the power of our Lord Jesus Christ that does that. You can have it today if you do not have it. So Jesus came and not only did he meet the leper, and there was occasion where there was two blind men. One text says one and another says two. But these blind men were there. Um, and the story is told, of course, of blind Barnabas. He was there by the wayside begging and pleading, asking for alms and help. And when Jesus passed by there and blind Barnabas heard the commotion in the crowds. And he asked, what did it mean? Who was it? And then they told him that it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth and then when he heard about that hope sprang up in his heart and he cried out saying Jesus thou son of God have mercy on me and they began to say be quiet be quiet because it was disrespectful the way he was crying out to the rabbi and they didn't do it in that those days out of respect and but he cried out the more when they began to cry out Jesus thou son of God have mercy on me he desired to be free his eyes were blind and he wanted to see so Jesus stood still, and as he stood still, he beckoning for the disciples to call him to himself. And he called uh, blind Barnabas. They said, good, be of good cheer, he's calling you. So he came to Jesus, and Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus gave him what he desired. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this on another occasion? And he said, Lord, I believe. And then God healed. He said, according to your faith, be it done. But Jesus Christ heals today. And I want to emphasize that because we've come 
in the in the sanctuary we've come and gathered but let us know let you know that we are gathered for a divine purpose to meet the lord to meet jesus christ we didn't come with the for other motives we've come to meet jesus and jesus shows up he shows up by ministering life he shows up by healing the oppressed he shows up by addressing needs he shows up by giving life and light to, to those that believe on him so my urgent challenge is that let's believe God today because he's in our midst. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, the Bible says, there I am in the midst of them. So I believe Jesus is here. The spirit of our Lord is here. And where Jesus Christ is, anything and everything can happen. Can somebody say amen? amen. Something can happen to you today if you dare believe God. Don't believe that it's strange or something foreign. Jesus heals today. So he uh, healed uh, here as he came into Peter's house. And he saw Peter's mother lying on the bed sick with a fever. Couldn't serve, couldn't get up. And all of a sudden Jesus touched her hand. And as he touched her, the divine life of God flowed out from him and touched this woman and the fever left her. Jesus can heal today. Brothers and sisters, he's got the same power to heal today as he's done before. And I want to encourage you to reach out to him today if you need a touch from God. If you're sick in your body, if your body has not been acting right, if you've carried a disease and the doctor says that you can't be cured, I want you to know that the word of God tells us that Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible with God. For with God all things are possible. So I ask you today and urge you today to believe with me if you have a condition in your body. Because God wants to heal you. And he told me to emphasize the healing, the bodily healing or physical healing. We talk about salvation. And when a person hears the gospel and believes, they get saved. Jesus comes into their life. We don't have a problem with that. But somehow people get sick and God wants them healed. And they carry conditions year after year after year not knowing that the same Jesus Christ that saved them, that healed their soul, is interested in healing their body. The Bible says he was wounded for my, our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we were healed. For it's a done deal, isn't that right? So we must believe the same way we believe to get saved. When I believed the word of God, that God would save me, he had died for my sins. And if I'd ask him into my life, he would come in. I believed that. And so Jesus came in without hesitation. In the same way, when I hear that Jesus Christ heals the body today, God wants you to know that it is important. It is his will not only to save or heal our soul, but it is his will that our physical bodies be healed. God can drive out sickness. God can drive out diseases. And that's what he wants to do. God wants to restore the wonderful power to heal. In those days when he walked the face of the earth, he cleansed the lepers. He opened the blind eyes. He raised the dead. He healed every kind of known sickness and every known disease during that time. And the Bible declares that he's the same. Can somebody say praise the Lord? And since he's the same, hallelujah, since he's the same, he will heal. If you need a healing today, I want you to reach out in faith and say, God, the healing is for me today. The, the Lord is not angry with me, nor is he punishing me with the condition. God does not need to throw afflictions on people to punish them. He is not in that business. He said, the thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I am come that the sheep might have life look at your neighbor and say God wants to give you life today hallelujah what we can learn as we look in the text here um, that healing is for all healing is not for uh, an elite few healing is not for those that are righteous within themselves healing is for all who believe all who can believe that Jesus 
died for their sins. He paid the price. He rose again, and he's the healer. And if you ask him, he will receive. So healing is universal. Healing is for everyone who believes. There are thousands upon thousands that may never receive. But it does not negate the fact that Jesus came, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have life eternal. It is for you today, sir. It is for you, ma'am. Healing is for you. Don't discount God anymore. Open your heart and begin to say, healing is for me. Whatever you need from God, know that Jesus Christ came to bring healing to your body, to your soul, to your mind, to your emotion. He's a healer today. Can somebody bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Christ is a healer. Christ is a healer. And the first thing that he did when the mother-in-law, he saw her down there, said she could not serve. And she, perhaps she obviously wanted to serve. Or it might have been a matter of gratitude when she got touched by God. I want you to know that when you get touched by Jesus, that touch is different from any touch there ever that someone can ever touch you with. Or it is a special touch. It is a divine touch. And when Jesus came and he touched this woman, Peter's mother-in-law, then she was instantly healed and she rose up right away there was no residue of the fever she rose up right away and began to serve what about you today are you ready to serve when God heals you God wants to heal us today but he also wants us to be grateful to the point that we're looking to serve in some capacity God hallelujah is a good God and Jesus cares for us and I believe Jesus Christ is the same today yesterday and forever because he never changed change them so here he healed and then the bible goes on and says something wonderful verse 16 when the evening was come they brought to him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick Notice this. He did not make a distinction. There is no prejudice in God. He loves the old. He loves the young. He loves uh, the blind. He loves the crippled. He loves those that are emotionally disturbed. He loves the outcast. He loves the bruised and the wounded heart. He loves us all. Hallelujah. And he does not see us the way others see him, see us. And sometimes you may be one a victim of rejection. But God does not reject us. He accepts us. And he wants you to come to him today. Even if you're listening to me by way of television and you feel all alone. Let me tell you that you're never alone when Jesus Christ is with you. He said, I will be with you even to the end of the world. He is with us now. And God wants to heal somebody today. He wants to make alive somebody. I believe him. So as you go through the pages of Mark and Matthew and Luke and John, you see incredible miracles, things that Jesus did that no mortal man could do. He was not just an ordinary man. He was God the Son. Hallelujah. And he could do anything. There was an occasion, hallelujah, when the disciples were in the boat. And they were trying to get to the other side as Jesus had sent them there. Then they encountered a storm and boisterous winds so boisterously loud and terrifying. And there they were roaring and roaring and they couldn't seem to make any headway. They thought they were going to be overthrown and died in the sea. But all of a sudden, and Jesus was back there just chilling. Just calm, just as calm. And all of a sudden, when they thought they were going to be destroyed and they were so terrified, they went back there and said to Jesus, Master, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus got up and he stood and he reached his hand somehow maybe and just spoke to the winds. He said, Peace, and he spoke to the sea. Peace, be still. And the Bible declares there was a great calm. And Jesus can speak to the storms of your life. He's able to do that too. Does it look like everything is topsy-turvy? Everything is going wrong? Does it look bad? Are you feeling that everything is out of whack? Do you feel like there's no hope? There's no help? And you've sought everywhere and cannot find the help that you need? But I am presenting to you the one that can meet your need. The one that understands from the beginning to end what you were encountering. And he wants to help. He wants to stretch out his hand to help somebody today God is real he's a healer today so you need not carry this condition any longer but it just 
requires that we believe. His kingdom has come to manifest in power to cleanse people, to heal and to set free. And this Holy Ghost power is well able to do the job of God. I thank God for his goodness. So he will heal you and he will set you free. You may be sorrowful in heart. You may need to be saved. You may need emotional healing. You may need healing from a broken heart. You may need healing from wounds of the past. You may need the curse broken from your life so that you can go forward and not repeat the patterns of your ancestors. But whatever you need today, may I encourage you to begin to believe right now and not discount yourself. Open wide your heart and believe and say healing is for me today, whether it's physical or otherwise. Say healing is for me today and let God have his way. We all have faith. Everybody don't have the same measure of faith. But if you're a Christian, God has dealt to every one of us a measure of faith. And that measure of faith certainly can be enough to be healed. So if you need healing, I want you to believe God today and release your faith so that Jesus can be Lord in your life. Can somebody just give God some praise? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Jesus is the answer for this world today. It is not our government. It is not the um, uh, institutions of society. It is Jesus Christ. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. God is a savior. He's earned the name savior. He preserves. He saves. He does not destroy. He saves. And he wants to save and heal today. And you can receive the life that comes from Jesus. It's about life. It's about life, but it's the life of God, the divine life. That's why the word, as you read that word, or as you hear the word preached, that word brings life. It brings life. Paul and Peter both were preaching at different instances. And uh, Paul was preaching one time, and as he was preaching the word of life, one man received faith to be healed. 